Marty Sullivan, a veteran of the Korean War. Marty was a fixture at this park. Many of you may have seen him because he volunteered and was here just about every doggone day, but you never knew his name. He was loved by all who knew him and his contributions to this park will be remembered for as long as the park is here. I'm very pleased to introduce one of Marty's friends, uh, Mark Dijon, who will do the dedication. Hey, good morning. That was a perfect segue about people running over time, so setting conditions for me. That's great. Um, today I have the uh, privilege of honoring the memory of Martin J. Sullivan, fondly known as Marty. Marty died two years ago during the height of COVID, so there wasn't a funeral or a memorial service because of the crowd restrictions. I only have five minutes to hit the highlights of Marty's 86 years of life, so I'll get right to the point. Uh, in 2017, Newsom High School created a Marty Sullivan Perseverance Award for deserving junior ROTC cadets. Perseverance is the perfect word to describe Marty's life. Marty was an orphan, a high school dropout, an unemployed veteran of the Forgotten War, a, widow, a widower, and an Irishman. So but despite all of his setbacks, <laughs> Marty persevered. I'm a fellow Irishman. Don't let the French last name fool you. I got some of that in there too. Uh, the last time I saw Marty, it was during the COVID pandemic when everyone was quarantined. I stopped by to drop him off some groceries and he shared this story with me. Marty's mother gave birth to him while battling the polio virus. After giving birth, his mother was sent to the polio wing of the hospital to live out the last of her days um, quarantined and to die alongside with her newborn baby. Marty was given a death sentence right from birth, but fortunately the doctor permitted the nuns to allow Marty to be baptized first. The nuns gave Marty to his grandmother and she snuck him to Ireland where he lived for the first two years of his life before returning back to the United States. Perseverance. Marty was raised by his grandparents and grew up in the working class neighborhood of East Boston. When Marty was 17, he quit school at the end of his sophomore year to enlist in the Marines with his two friends. The Marine recruiter rejected Marty because at barely five feet, four inches tall, he was too short to join the Marines. Marty was underage and underweight when he arrived at a Navy recruitment office, but he didn't let that stop him. Marty gained the necessary weight and convinced his grandparents to sign the permission slips for him to enlist in the Navy perseverance. Marty told Tampa Bay Times, we absolutely wanted to go to war just to fulfill our duty and serve our country. When I went into the Navy, I thought I was the smartest guy in the room, the toughest guy, but I found out real quick that there's always someone tougher. Marty was most proud to have been a two-time shellback for crossing the equator twice during the Korean War. Marty served bravely as one of the tin can sailors during America's Forgotten War. Marty started as a deckhand carrying sacks of potatoes, 50 pounds for a young guy, the small guy, it's hard, and uh, then got to get it to 10 pound onions. So that was, a, you know, for his size, a, a better thing while he was on the USS Strong. Marty learned how to repair and maintain f large firearms and got promoted to a fire control technician. Marty manned the firearms when the Navy destroyer launched attacks off the coast of Japan and Korea during the war. Perseverance. Marty served in the Navy for eight years and received an honorable discharge. When he returned home after the war, Marty was un unemployed for an entire year. Without a formal education, Marty said, I knew I'd always have to be working jobs with my hands because I sure as hell wasn't gonna get a classy job. Marty started to work factory jobs in Boston, first in the shipyards where his grandfather worked, then at a shoe factory on an assembly line gluing rubber soles onto shoes. Finally, he landed a job at Gillette Company in Boston. He worked his way up to higher paying positions and quality control during his nearly 26 years working for Gillette. Perseverance. Marty met his wife Alice on a blind date. They married, had two sons, and later two grandsons. 
In 1990, Marty was able to fulfill his wife's dream of moving to Florida in order to be closer to her two brothers and be surrounded by orange groves. Alice picked out their home in Strawberry Ridge, Bel Rico, and she chose the neighborhood because neighbors waved to them when they drove through the fur for the first time, compared to Boston, where it might have been something else they were waving. Um, <laughs> so with just over a decade of living the Florida lifestyle, Alice developed cancer. Marty spent a year caring for her with multiple doctors and hospice workers, and he was at her side when she died in their home on December 20th, 27th, 2002. Without his wife of 42 years at his side, Marty didn't let the heartbreak destroy him. Instead of dwelling inward on the grief of his painful loss, Marty looked outward and focused his attention on ways to serve his local community. Perseverance. Marty found, uh, Marty found in a lifeline in his weekly volunteer shifts here at Hillsborough County's Veterans Memorial Park and Museum. Marty served on multiple committees to plan the memorials and mo monuments built throughout our park. Marty gave his time generously and devoted the last decade of his life to honor our fallen and all of our veterans, whether they served in Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, or Afghanistan, or wherever they served around the globe. While volunteering, Marty inside, <coughs> while volunteering inside the museum, Marty learned that an eligible, honorably discharged military veteran who left school to enter the armed forces could obtain a regular high school diploma simply by filling out some paperwork. Thanks to the support of Hills, Hillsborough County's Consumer and Veteran Services and Newsom High School, Marty got lots of media attention as graduate number 601 of the Newsom High School class of 2017. Marty got to travel by limo, participated in the graduation breakfast, walked in the graduation ceremony, and he got to pose with adoring teenagers such as Frank Strom's daughter. I don't know if that was at the prom or not. Um, during an interview, Marty admitted, I may not say it, but it really does mean a lot to me. I'm already, I've already made a spot for my diploma on my mantle. So at age 83, Marty was finally a high school graduate. Perseverance. Marty was one of the park's most consistent volunteers and ever-present tour guides. While greeting visitors for the Wreaths Across America event in 2019, Marty fell, hit his head, and broke his arm. While at home recovering from his injuries, he fell again and was unable to lift himself up. Thank God, after laying on the floor for 11 hours by himself, his friend Bob Silver found him and likely saved Marty's life that day. Marty bounced back from his injuries, but lost his driving privileges as a result of his arm injury. The major setback did not deter Marty from returning to the Veterans Memorial Park and volunteering at the museum as often as possible perseverance. Marty and I became friends when I joined the Veterans Memorial Park Committee back in 2011. We were both war veterans from Massachusetts and we had a great friendship that cut across the age difference. Marty was my right-hand man and was, the, was with me every step of the way to build the Iraq Veterans Memorial. Marty was in his late 70s at the time and he would drive from, from Val Rico to South Tampa to attend planning meetings. He even drove over an hour to Bradenton Motorsports Park to support a fundraiser, and he actually raised more money than any other volunteer at the event that day, walking around, selling raffle tickets. Marty was there with me when the six-foot-tall Battle Cross statue monument was installed during the groundbreaking ceremony, at the ribbon-cutting dedication ceremony, and even with me afterwards when I was interviewed by the local media. Marty was like family to me. Marty was at all the fundraiser events with me and my wife, Jamie. He met my parents and brother, my newborn daughter at the time, uh, at the Iraq Veterans Memorial Dedication. Marty adored my daughter, Nadia, and kept in touch daily on Facebook through the years. I miss talking with Marty and eating at restaurants together. I miss watching movies uh, at the movie theater, and, and every time I see Raisinets, I think of Marty, uh, his favorite candy. The news of Marty's death hit me hard. I regret not spending more time with him, but I'm grateful for the time we shared. I, lot, I, I learned a lot from Marty. He, he overcame losses and hardships, but throughout his life, he always kept a positive attitude, which reminded me of this quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. 
All the, wor all the water in the world cannot drown you unless it gets inside of you. What I learned most from Marty is that all the negativity in the world cannot drown you if you don't let it inside you. You're never too old to make a difference in your community, and it's never too late to leave a positive impact on the lives you touch. Special thanks to Marty Ryan and Anastasia Dawson for contributing details about Marty Sullivan's life that were a source of inspiration for my dedication remarks. Huge thanks to Bob Silsmer for leading the effort to erect a granite bench in our park and to everyone who contributed to funding the bench that bears a stunning likeness of Marty. His photo on there, you gotta go check it out. Um, I encourage you to walk over to see the bench on the path just outside the Korea Memorial. And in case you don't get a chance, the bench reads as follows. Thank you, Marty, for selflessly dedicating over a decade of your life to volunteering at the Veterans Memorial Park and Museum. Forever grateful for your devotion to honoring veterans and fallen. Marty, we miss you every single day. Thank you. And to all of you, welcome home.